What's going on, guys? Welcome to May's episode of Game of the Month, the show where we pick a game at random every month, and at the end of the month, we talk about it. My name's Seth, and joining me today is Chevy. Chevy, it's been a day or two since we did Plus Club, where we talked about Grid Legends, The Senders, and Chivalry 2. Hopefully, everybody got a chance to go check that out. But since then, how you doing, and are you excited to talk about Last Epoch, the game we played in May, and to find out what our game of the month for June is? Yeah, um... I'm doing pretty all right. Uh, You know, we just got back from the gym and I worked all day, so I'm kind of tired, but muscle through it. Uh, I sat around all day because I'm on vacation and today I decided not to do anything. I stayed home and uh, I played the last epoch all day. So I'll plan to say on that. But then after sitting around all day, I went to the gym for an hour and uh, did the treadmill mostly. And so um, I feel exhausted now. It's really sad that I sat around all day and it just made it worse. Well, yeah, I, uh, I know it's like, it's, it's kind of sounds weird, but you know, you spend a, uh, any a period of time like relaxing too much and then jumping straight in activity. Uh, it's a lot harder than if you were active all day. So yeah, anytime I like do a full day at work and then go work out, it just feels like just a more intensive version of, you know, already being active for most of the day, but then yeah, sitting around is like the worst. I'm like, I don't want to move. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Other than that, um, you know, we not to go too into obviously what the video is about, but mm-hmm. you know, we played a lot of Last Epoch last month. <laughs> yeah, uh, and so uh, yeah, probably have some stuff to say about it. And then I'm always looking forward to seeing what we're playing next. Same. Uh, so yeah, we will uh, we'll talk about Last Epoch in a sec. But with that, uh, we got to find out what we're going to be playing in June. On top of the games that we'll be playing for PlayStation Plus in June, which I believe are NBA 2K. 23 mm. uh Jurassic World Evolution 2 mm-hmm. and Trek to Yomi. Correct. So we'll be playing those. Sounds like an easy enough month. Let's find out what we will be playing for our game of the month in June, though. And those games on our list for anybody who can't see the screen is still Halo Infinite, Temtem, Elder Scrolls Online, World War Z, Monster Hunter Rise, Outriders, Evil Dead. Back for Blood, No Man's Sky, Second Extinction, Near Replicant, Final Fantasy XIV, Age of Empires IV. We've added recently Omega Strikers and very recently Age of Wonders IV. Hoping for that one to win, if I'm uh, being honest. But it's all random. You ready to find out what we're playing? Yep. All right. Going to click the button in three, two, one, and go. And we're going to find out at random what game we're playing in June. The wheel is slowing down and we are creeping along towards... Elder Scrolls Online. Yep. And we are playing ESO in June. Very interesting. I wonder, I was getting auto build for that game for a while and I wasn't playing it. I was like, fuck, I need to, I need to stop. And then uh, I think I canceled the auto building like a month ago and now I'm going to play it. So hopefully I auto build for like three months and I still have the, oh, yeah, yeah. the premium version of ESO. But uh I haven't installed, so uh, yeah, I'm uh, ready to play that myself. What do you think about uh, playing ESO in uh, in June? Um, I mean, I don't have the new content for it, but um, I'm sure I got plenty to do. I have not played that game a whole lot, so yeah. Yep, always curious to to see where MMOs are at, though. So the state of them, yeah, um, yeah, it'll be interesting because they've added uh, they added the last expansion, which I played a little bit of, and then since then I think they've done two or three of the major updates they do per expansion. So um, plenty of new stuff to do, and uh, it'll be fun as with every MMO relearning everything because that's always the funnest part. We have to oh, relearn how to mod a mini map onto it since they use a stupid compass system. But yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. All right. Well, we'll be playing ESO. Let us know in the comments what you guys think about ESO, and are you ready to play it in June? Potentially with us if you're on PC. I know the game doesn't have crossplay, which is uh, regrettable. But uh, yeah. All right. So um, with that. Uh, in May, we played Last Epoch. If you guys didn't get a chance to play Last Epoch or you've never even heard of it, because maybe you only play on console, which is very possible, because I believe Last Epoch is only on PC. Last Epoch is an isometric uh, action hack and slash RPG in a similar vein as Diablo. Uh, the game's big focus is time travel. There are, um, uh, There's, of course, a map that you explore in the game like any other game like this, but there are different uh, layers in time on each map. You can go uh, in the prehistoric times or in a uh, futuristic, not futuristic, like um, 
cyberpunk, but like future ruins of, uh, of a disaster that happened. Uh, there are like five classes ranging from like a sorcerer, uh, some kind of druid guy, base classes. There's three subclasses per base class. Some of the subclasses are not out yet because the game's in early access worth mentioning. Worth mentioning. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, there's a paladin style class that turns into a paladin or, um, some kind of like more, uh, tanky, uh, build. And then there is a rogue style character that can be like, you know, an archer type person or an assassin type person, sorcerer character. And then another magic user. I forgot what it was. Do you remember? Which, which one did you say a moment ago? Sorcerer. Ah, uh, so the necro style one. Yeah. So there's a necromancer style character. And then the guy that looks like should be a warrior can either be a druid or what was the other thing? Like a druid, a shaman, and shaman. like a naturalist or something like that. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, like typical fare when it comes to this genre, you uh, click around, you attack enemies, you go through huge groups, you level up, um, you put points into uh, passive abilities. You also are able to uh, lock in on um, specific abilities that you're focusing on and they all have their own skill trees. So if you're like using an ability that, uh, you know, is like a slam or something, if you want to focus on that and there's a limited amount of abilities you can focus on, um, it has its own skill tree where you can start really dialing in how that slam works, new things it can now do, or you know, longer durations on certain properties of it. There's a lot to do when it comes to uh, how you um, kind of make your character in this. Uh, it's got crafting, of course. It's got um, a forge where you can kind of change certain uh, parts of your armor and weapons. It's got uh, runes or, or, or no idols. Idols. Idol. It's got an idol system. Uh, as you play through the game, you unlock more and more of this kind of like Tetris style grid where you can place different shaped idols in there that give you different stats. So it's kind of more of an end game thing where you start really dialing in uh, the specifics to your build that you're working on. And uh, yeah, is there anything else I'm missing in terms of uh, gameplay? Recent multiplayer edition, it well, did not start with it. Yeah, like a month ago, they implemented multiplayer. So it has, it's a new thing. It's playable. We'll talk about it, I'm sure. Um, but it's definitely in its infancy in terms of the networking. We will definitely talk about. And uh, really interesting to note that this game released a while back. I played it when it came out. And uh, it was a single player ARPG, which I thought was really weird when I yeah. played it. I bought it. I was like, oh, yeah, I love these kind of games. And then it's like single player. I was like, what? And then they're like, oh, yeah, we're working on multiplayer. Well, it's finally out and it's perfect time because we are playing it, uh, you know, last like two months. But mm. also one last thing to note, uh, they just released a new update uh, like four days ago um, that has completely changed the first chapter of the game completely. It's it, it's a whole new thing. Um, so they are actively updating the game in big ways. Um, this game is definitely unfinished. Like I said, there's subclasses that don't they're not implemented in the game yet. So, which is a bummer, but we'll talk about that. And yeah, anything else? Anything else? Single player, multiplayer. It's got a bunch of features. I don't think so. All right. Well, we both played it quite a bit last month, but we put some time into it this month. I've actually put quite a bit of time into it in the last like two days because I was like, I got to really know what I'm talking about here. Um, so, yeah, let's jump into uh, our impressions of. Uh, Last epoch, I was fucking forgot what it's called. Uh, what'd you think? All right, um, so I'm actually because I think it's just gonna be quicker to kind of start with the the I don't even want to call them dislikes, but uh, issues with the game currently. Uh, the the absolutely um, undefendable glaring issues of the game, yeah. Um, however, well, I would say they're a little defendable because it's an early access, so it's not a released game yet. So you know what you get into when you buy a game like that. Yeah, I'm just saying like you couldn't make a case to oh, like be like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, not that yeah. big. No, no, these are like some pretty big issues. Um, so yeah, as was kind of hinted towards earlier, the the multiplayer though functioning um, has weird uh, connection issues at times. Uh, the game will unsync. It has happened to me in the past when I played with Chris, where we were both playing 
but we weren't playing together anymore for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, we were both on each other's screen, but doing completely different things. So the game unsynced and we had to like reconnect and, and get that going. Um, we experienced last night literally not being able to walk down some stairs, Yeah, which was bonkers. <laughs> it's probably in the footage that might be being shown right now, but I'm, I got a lot of footage, so maybe that won't make it in this episode, but it's in there. I recorded yeah. it. Um, rubber banding is pretty common. Um, Very common. Regardless of which player it is. I, yeah. I haven't heard anyone play this and not have that issue. Yeah. Um, it was getting really bad earlier when I was playing with uh, Sarah. I was just bouncing constantly and walking forward. I was like, Phew. yeah. Um, and these are just things they need to iron out. Now, fortunately, uh, well, except for this update, it's been a little more common but beforehand it was not as common i felt like it's way more common right now yeah yeah for sure and one thing that i had seen before but i'm seeing way more regularly right now so they need to figure out whatever's going on there was a, a glitch that happened before but now it's happening to me regularly where whenever i move from zone to zone um Sometimes some of my abilities don't activate when I press the button. Oh, right, right, right. Um, it happened a couple times with you, but today uh, with Sarah, it happened multiple times as well. It, it's um, happened to me in the past. And a lot of times you can fix it by just going to another zone. But it's really annoying when I have like four abilities and today at one point, two of them wouldn't activate when I press the buttons. And then when yeah. I went to the next zone, they worked again. Yeah, so they got some stuff to iron out for sure. Um, yeah, outside of that, I actually don't think I have a lot of nitpicking left to do because I think that everything else the game does, and at least the ideas that are presented as of yet, uh, are absolutely great. Um, I, I like the thematic of a, uh, a story that unfolds about uh, trying to figure out, you can kind of get, I, I don't want to do the whole story, I think you should play it, but you basically start off you know, in your present day, you get put into a situation where you're thrown into the future where things have gone to shit. And then you're trying to figure out how you got there. And so you kind of bounce around time, learning what caused this event and eventually, you know, seeing the the beginning of it and stuff like that. So it's a pretty cool idea um, for a story uh, that I don't think, you know, obviously it's been done in some capacity before but i don't see it a lot so and definitely not in an rpg uh one example of how they play with the time in this is there's a mission uh that i forgot how to do again i've done it before uh where you go to this old like um i don't know if it's like an old like college or school or something like that but it's like in ruins when you first go there and there's a door you can't unlock oh yeah and yeah. you have to go back in time back when the place was still around and, and there's people there and you have to get the key then and then come back to the future to unlock that door. Yeah, I don't think it was a key. I think it's a an emblem of their order. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I won't just, let you in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, but you have to go back to get that yeah, to, yeah. to come back and and it's like a small thing, but it's like still interesting that they're even thinking about time when they're doing the mission. No, it makes it fun in, yeah. in a storytelling way. Another good example is like there's a bridge that's broken in one of the times you're you're playing, and you go through a portal and you go into like prehistoric times. Uh, to to go around to the other side of this cliff and then you come back through and mm -hmm. you've crossed that gap now so um, it's pretty cool so yeah if you if that sounds even remotely interesting uh, the game's full of it so yeah yes yeah, that's, that's the core of the game yeah uh, that being said the game follows a pretty typical formula when it comes to like ability and combat system uh, if you have played any modern uh, ARPG, you will be very familiar with the way you equip your skills and the amount of them you're allowed to have a hot bar. Um, it is very similar to Path of Exile in a lot of ways in this in this regard. It's similar to Path of Exile and any games that were made by the guys who made Grim Dawn or Titan Quest because uh, the way you equip your abilities on your bar, you right click and it shows them all very similar to how they do it. And also yeah. the um, passive tree is very similar to those games because it's it is, a yeah. horizontal line that uh, some of them um, path into other things. You have to start from here to get to that end or start once you get to like level 15 in that passive tree, new ones will activate and you can start going down those. So it's a very, very similar system, but uh, there is a lot of similarities to Path of Exile as well, particularly the end game that I did not mention. The game is unfinished and has an end game. Um, but uh, it's it's very similar to Path of Exile. It is. And even in their skill tree system, it is definitely more akin to 
the games you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, but it also I think offers a complexity. I'm not quite at the level of Path of Excel. That yeah. would be that's a task. Let me tell it's you, it's a responsible uh, complexity. Well, what I think they do is I think they offer a large amount of complexity, but it's offered in multiple m small facets that make it bite-sized things to learn it, and they all kind of like you know harmonize with each other. So you have the the one you're talking about where you get your passive abilities uh, from leveling, and I think you unlock four moves through that as well. Uh, and then eventually you do unlock a second class, you make your, uh, your advanced class or whatever, mm -hmm. and it has one as well. And you get another four moves and more passives that way you get to equip the five, uh, skills of your choice and those unlock their own skill trees, which can be completely different depending on who's playing the character too. Cause you, we could both have, for example, like a cleave move. I don't know any names off the top of my head right now, but, and I could spec into like bleeding, uh, health you know vampire uh purism and you know crit and then you could be like oh uh, well when i crit a totem drops and when i do you know stuff like like it'll be completely different it's the same move so mm -hmm. uh mine does lightning damage yours does fire you know stuff like that um and then on top of that you have the idol system which allows you to really play with your um, sub stats things like crit mana regeneration health etc um and that's all just chance on what you get on these and some of them are like generic for everybody and some are specific to your archetype so you'll get like sorcerer ones druid ones etc um, i really like that it offers a lot but also like it's not just to use path of exile as an example again you look and it's just giant skill tree mm -hmm. right Intim it's it's really daunting, intimidating it's really intimidating versus like i can go a little bit here a little bit here a little bit here but in total, it is quite a bit. So, mm -hmm. and then you have the forging system, which has more micro, you know, stat adjustments. So, and then the idols, it's yeah. just, um, there's a lot to play with. There's, so. there's a lot of building in this, yeah. a lot of character building. Um, and I really like it. And you can play the same character, uh, in multiple builds and it feels completely different, which is fantastic. So, yeah, I was telling Sarah, cause I think she has a level like 68, uh, Sentinel, which is the, class subclass that can turn into paladin and some, board class. something for yeah, yeah um and uh i told her i was making one of those as well and she didn't seem very like she's like yeah you know i'm i'm already playing one of those too and i'm like I'm like that's cool like i'm i'm probably gonna pick completely different stuff than you have and i was like would you would what a uh, subclass did you pick and she's like paladin i'm like yeah i picked the forge one that's like about shield combat because yeah. i want to make like a tank and she made a healer mm -hmm. so um and even if i picked paladin i'm confident that we wouldn't make the same builds build yeah. yeah so the game really allows like you could have like four people playing sentinel completely different in one game mm -hmm. yeah and i i really appreciate that mm -hmm. um and it makes me look forward to i'm sure down the line when they decide to make a new base class and three more you know subclasses that just essentially they're adding four characters at that point so yeah um i think the gear drop which is something that's obviously a core component to ARPGs, is uh done very well um, there's definitely a balance to be had. You you know you learn really quick if you ever play Torchlight Two that there's such things too much loot. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a weird thing. Uh, this game will drop a lot of loot at you, but uh, you're not replacing stuff super often. A lot of it is just kind of there. Yeah, and, and prior Tasty Casts where we talked about this, I kind of said like it's it's almost like when you're switching out loot in this for a while, it almost feels more adjacent and not a quick upgrade. So mm -hmm. like you'll find weapons that are similar level tiers, but maybe their stats are just oriented differently. So it's not like a huge stat increase, but maybe it's closer to the stats you're looking for, for your build. And yeah. so you're trading out stuff every once in a while in a, I think in a good pace, um, you're not doing it constantly so you do get to kind of live in your gear for a little bit which i appreciate um because i ha i hate both sides and the worst is not enough loot that should drives you nuts in games but i learned from torchlight 2 that getting loot too often that is worth upgrading doesn't really let you sit in the stuff that you have yeah, you, you don't, don't really get to, to use it you don't really get to enjoy your yeah. weapons because you're moving uh to new gear so often and this game 
um, does feel on a little bit on the slower side in terms of how often you're changing out your gear. But when you're changing out your gear, it feels a little more meaningful. I feel like it's a little more um, specific, like like I'm making this tank character and uh, every once in a while I'll find a piece of gear and it's like, you know, level, you know, whatever, 28 or something. And uh, some of some of the stats on there, are like plus whatever health, plus whatever uh, armor. But then the other stuff is like freeze damage. I'm like, I'm not using freeze weapons. But mm. then later I find a piece of gear that's very similar to it, but doesn't have that freeze damage. It has something that's more akin to what I'm looking for. Now I'm swapping it out, but I still kind of using something similar to what I was using before until you go to a couple zones later, you start finding higher end gear and then you start making those bigger jumps. But I mean, a good example of that is with my my main character, my sorcerer. Um, I would get a lot of stuff that would have something I want. And then it also have like minion additions to it. I don't really run minions. So mm -hmm. like it was a wasted stat, but I wanted the other stat. And so eventually I'm slowly finding stuff that's like maybe a little less the stat I want, but it also has a second stat I actually want. And I can kick that minion stuff out finally yeah. and get more benefit out of that idol. So. And you can do a lot of the stuff in the forge as well. Mm -hmm. If you have the the crafting, you know, if you have the, the materials. Yeah, whatever they're called. I yeah, forgot. Um, which there's a lot. It reminds there me also of like Grim Dawn and Titan Quest. There's a shitload of uh, materials you find that you can uh, really hone in your gear. So mm -hmm. a lot of options. The, 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 if this game has a strong uh, part of it, it's it's the ability to really craft your character's build. Yeah. Um, yeah. What else can I add to that? Um, the enemy types are, are you know, Kind of what you would expect of these games, except for I do think they have some pretty interesting affixes for the or affixes for the uh, uh, unique, you know, mobs you run into. Um, you know, sometimes it'll be like, you know, resurrects once, you know, type thing or at a half health turns into two and stuff like that. Um, I hate when they resurrect. You like yeah, because you're usually running off. Right? Yeah. All of a sudden they get kinda, back up. I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, and all, just a bunch of stuff like that, right? And I uh, I always appreciate that. That was one thing I really liked even about Diablo 3 um, to compare to another title that did something similar. Um, it makes it makes the grind more interesting when your enemies uh, have variances, right? So um, that's kind of the interesting thing about this game is like, obviously we've compared it to Path of Exile and, and uh, was it Iron Lore? I don't remember. The people who make Grim right, Dawn right, and, right. and originally made Titan Quest. Um, this game obviously has its own thing going on, and I do feel like it feels unique. It does yes. feel like its own ARPG, 100%. Um, but I also feel like the devs of this were really paying attention to other ARPGs. It's not like they co copied one other ARPG. They're trying to be it. They just took a lot of the Super really good inspired, ideas, yeah. and they, they had, it seems like they had their idea of the time manipulation thing in the story but then they start paying attention to all the things they like in other arpgs and you start seeing that dna in there because even yeah when you bring up the affix affixes in um in uh, diablo 3 it is kind of similar to that yeah. for sure so yeah and that's that is a, a positive thing from diablo 3 for yeah. me so like i i I'm, I'm appreciate that they even did that so yeah, it creates more dynamic challenges random stuff yeah um yeah, what else? The campaign is decently long, which was a nice surprise. A lot of and it's unfinished. ARPGs, you can kind of fly through the story really fast. This one is a trek, um, and they are updating it, and, and it is not finished. It is in early access, like we've said a couple times. Um, there are multiple side things to do as well. There's an arena you have to have keys for, which you know, you'll find uh, in the end game mostly, but you can find them outside of it. Um, the arena is just, you know, what it sounds like. You go in, you fight waves of enemies until you die. Uh, and then it's mostly an EXP thing. And then there, I think there are two or three dungeons in the game right now that involve keys. And they all have, like, a unique property to them. Mm -hmm. um, one of them has a forge where you can take your purple gear and a, a unique piece of gear and mix them together to try to get another crazy piece of gear. So, um, again, more levels of customization. Definitely stuff to work towards, yeah. yeah. Um, on top of an end game that um, is fairly robust. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but there's a lot there to do. And mm -hmm. they kind of, so just to, to, since we're talking about it, the end game is basically like islands um, that have level ranges. And once you, like, for example, the first one would be like 50 through 56 or something like that, right? And you'll accomplish enough of these because you're like you go to this one this one has a higher chance to drop idols and this one has a chance to drop keys etc cetera, etc cetera. and as you do enough of them it fills this bar and once uh, it's like a reputation or affinity or something like that and once it hits certain points you'll get a quest 
it's a separate mission. You finish that and then you continue on your way. And when you do three of those, you finish that bracket and you can keep doing it if you want to, but it allows you to unlock a different level range one and, and it just expands and expands. And every Island has a specific type of gear that, uh, is higher. Drop chances has, has a higher drop yeah. rate. Yeah. So if you're looking for rings or looking for swords or double handed swords or whatever, uh, you'll look at the Island and, uh, you know, if it's within that level range and you're that level, you're going to try and find gear for that. Obviously you're going to yeah. move up to the new islands. They'll have better gear. So there's just something I'm trying to work towards. Cause like my sorcerer is like 74 and I only have level 66 unlocked on the Island. So the gear is like, meh. so yeah, it's not really yeah. helping you outside <laughs> of like selling it or breaking it down. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's something to work towards. And then, yeah, you get those keys, the dungeons, et cetera. I, there's just a lot of stuff there. And this is just the early ideas. Like, I'm sure with enough feedback and players playing it, they're going to make tweaks and stuff like that. So well, they far, it seems like they're they're taking a good approach to making changes. They completely remade the first chapter of the game. Yeah. So they're definitely willing to make changes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it is a fantastic... Um, ARPG. Um, I won't get too into like strong opinions on it yet because I'll wait to the grades. But um, I would say uh, it's really easy for me to play and just keep playing. And I'm not like feeling burnt out even doing the grinding stuff. So well, even when we played the other night, and then I played a lot of today. Yeah, uh, I went from like level one to I think I'm like. 48 or something now mm. um since yesterday i've been playing like a lot um yeah which is close to like the end of the game i'm getting close yeah, yeah yeah um i've i've been having blast like i i literally last night me and you were playing you have to go to work so like you you went to bed but like i stayed up and kept playing till like i think 7 a.m so like i i it's really hard for me to stop playing um and we will get into recommendations and grades and stuff, uh, but I also want to emphasize, I think it's a really good game too, um, but uh, it definitely has some real issues, early access issues, for sure. but real issues that once they fix that shit, um, I think it, it's definitely an ARPG that uh, people should definitely check out, but we'll recommend uh, when we get there. Mm. Um, I can hop into my impressions? Yep, 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 okay. Yep. Um, pretty much everything you said, uh, explaining the game for anybody who hasn't played it, because even people on PC probably haven't played this, probably a lot of people haven't played this still. Um, but people on console definitely haven't played it. Um, so kind of going through the the all the features of the game, I think is important to kind of let people know about it. But uh, when it comes to impressions, I, I think it's a really good RPG. Um, this might sound blasphemous, especially with the game coming out soon. But when I played the Diablo 4 beta the whole time I was playing it and enjoying it, I was missing Last Epoch's uh, character building. The whole time, I think that was probably my biggest problem is I was playing a lot of Last Epoch at the time, and I played the beta, and I wasn't that impressed with the skills in uh, Diablo. And so, like, uh, and then playing this again, I understand why I felt that way, because Last Epoch just has really, really fun character building. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's it's a really solid game. Um, we had played before. Um, my character from then is like a level 61, 62, uh, like assassin type character, kind of a sloppy build. I need to rework it, but, uh, essentially a lot of bleed, a lot of crit, very squishy, too squishy. I need to Glass fix cannon. it. <laughs> need to fix it. Um, because, uh, you know, something I always try to tell people on RPG specifically, but any game, uh, if you're dead, you're not doing DPS. So if you're excited about doing a lot of DPS, but you're dying a lot, you're not helping. So you need to get some survivability. That's what I plan on doing with that character this month though. Um, because they did implement this brand new chapter one that I thought would be really important for us to check out. Cause it's actually a very big difference. Mm. Uh, we started new characters, um, you made a naturalist that I plan to make into a druid yeah, or shapeshifter or whatever it is. And then I made, I don't remember what it's called. It's like a forge master or something like that. It's the second of the subclasses out of the sentinel, uh, subclass, um, or base class. Um, but it's a sword and board character that specs mostly into, uh, armor rating, uh, shield stuff. Uh, if I block, I get, um, benefits i also get uh you know better chances to block so uh, it's mostly about using a shield and that's what i wanted to do with this character um i got this character into the 40s within like a couple of days pretty quickly um and uh oddly enough because i'm not a big tank guy in games 
I like this character more than I like my rogue character, but I also have played the game enough mm. to understand everything in it so far that making this character, I had a little more insight on uh, where I was going, what kind of things I should be looking for, um, how to be you know better with using the idol system. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm yeah, playing it. You even used it with your first character until like no, the game, right? I just sped through the game with my yeah. first character, and I was like, okay, I should probably start using some of these idols. <laughs> um, and so yeah, I kind of skipped that feature, which is a huge feature of the game. Um, this time around, though, uh, you know, very very on point with uh, how the game works. I knew what I was doing and uh, made a much better character. Uh, so I'm playing a tank, uh, very not my style, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. I essentially have a dash ability where I can uh, leap into combat and hit a bunch of people then i have um a move where i do a shield bash but because i have that as one of my specialty abilities um, i have a bunch of stuff uh, set up for it so when i do the shield bash it increases my ability to block after that so when i shield bash i have guaranteed blocks when people swing at me for a limited amount of time um, i also heal when i shield bash um, so i'm essentially when i jump in and shield bash bash a group i um I'm setting myself up for defense for when the fight starts for anything that survives. And then I have uh, the ability smite, which is essentially a beam, a holy beam that comes down, hits people. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it does a little bit. If you spec into it, you can turn this thing into an electricity move, a fire move, a frost move. Um, I think I've started specking into the electricity part of it. But mostly I've specced into the healing aspect of it because I wanted to make sure that I didn't have to rely on my potions in case I needed to heal. Uh, luckily, Smite uses almost no mana at all. So I can literally just hold Smite and the and the cooldown is almost like instant. So I just like hold Smite when I need to heal and it starts going boom, 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 boom. And it does a little bit of damage, but my health just flies up. So I can sit there. If someone's like wailing on me, do a lot of damage. I can just sit there and right keep healing while hurting them so sometimes i fought a boss at one point i'm a tank so i don't do a lot of damage um i fought a boss for a very long time but they were <laughs> unable to really hurt me but and i slowly hurt them over time so i, I killed it took a long time it was i was like oh my god last, my last time i played poe i made a character like that and i was just like who okay <laughs> yeah i needed some dps uh luckily when i played with sarah uh earlier today um I would sometimes get in a situation where I would, I would just spam smite and uh, she would come in with her army of minions and they would just do a bunch of DPS and I was just healing everybody while I was keeping oh, yeah. myself alive. And uh, that was, that was nice. Your it was a good mix. Are kind of nutty in this game. Yeah. Considering every class can be a pet build, to some extent, which yeah. I think is interesting. My forge dude, his third move I unlocked in his tree is this uh, like, robotic like uh iron uh golem guy. okay and so i have a minion um i use them for a little yeah, bit the sorcerer has options too yeah so. so everybody can be a pet person um so weird which i think is really kind of interesting mm -hmm. it's not just like you think like oh necromancer of course and uh not druid but um beastmaster beastmaster yeah. would be the only pet classes but it's like no my my sword and board guy can be a pet guy as well yeah on top of that some uh uh loot you equip has, sometimes has a uh, percentage chance of you know spawning bees or spawning <laughs> an ethereal insect yeah. Yeah. or you know all sorts of weird stuff so i was kind of a on accident a pet build for a little bit in the beginning of my yeah. sword and board guy which is really weird and then my last move i have equipped to my dude is um i spawn for 10 seconds four shields that float around me and each one does 75 damage a piece and they can be destroyed and i have it set up now where it lasts longer than 10 seconds when it's out every six seconds i get a heal and if a shield gets destroyed it heals me so while i have that and i'm using smite and i'm doing shield bash to heal i'm creating um a lot of uh, health coming back to me while fighting people also the shield move uh gets everybody's attention so as soon as Taunts. i start that yeah everybody comes after me and then my main ability just my normal attack uh every two hits is a really quick attack but then the last attack hits everyone around me and it also i have a spec so it pulls people mm. so i'm definitely building a tank um and it's a lot of fun i feel like i'm a little more involved uh ability wise than with my rogue who i'm just trying to burn people down as fast as possible right. and not die which is fun but also with my build currently it's really annoying uh, but with this dude um mostly i'm just making sure i don't die and people around me don't die uh, i'm not quite building a healer but mostly just making sure i can get most of the attention 
I'm, I'm a tank. I'm just playing tank. Um, but it's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, the game itself, um, the game doesn't have the best graphics in the world, but they're actually pretty decent as well. I think it's a really good looking indie uh, RPG. It's not Diablo 4 graphically, um, but most RPGs are not. Even, you know, Wolson is a really good looking RPG. But this game has uh, good enough graphics. I think the style is generic but fine i think it, it's it's you know the, the armors are cool enough they added a shop recently a cosmetic shop um we can get some more stylistic stuff i have like a crazy like skull helmet now because uh i bought the game early so they gave me like 350 mm -hmm. of the cosmetic uh coins um i wouldn't mind supporting the game further anyway um honestly but uh but yeah so the style of the game is okay the world is cool though i really like um, what they do with the time uh going to different zones and seeing how it looks different in different eras um is an interesting thing especially because not a whole lot of games do that so um that's cool enemy you kind of brought up the affixes which is um which is cool but i think enemy variety is actually pretty decent in this game mm. uh you're constantly running to new stuff there's a lot of things to fight in this game a lot of bosses that do different things um with my tank it's always just kind of a uh, just a standstill of us hanging out until their health finally drains but um if you're playing a character that's not just tanking hits um they can be pretty interesting um, yeah, and they follow in vain of a lot of modern ones where there are mechanics to dodge yeah, too so. exactly so it's not just you know it's, it's not boring. Um, we already went over loot, but I think it's uh, it's good. It could be a little better, but it's good. Um, and I, I think I think it be go ahead, sorry. I think legendaries uh, drop at a uh, decent rate, although sometimes I'll get like two or three at once, and then sometimes I won't get any for a long time. Yeah, their, their loot table systems takes a little getting used to because like legendaries are basically the uniques of this game. Mm -hmm. And then purples are what I would consider to be like the legendaries yeah. in other and, games. And then there's set pieces as well. And there's also set pieces. Yeah. yeah. So there's a, a weird uh, amount of like gear types outside of your yeah. just normal rarity system. So um, and I do think in the end game, when you start finally getting purples is when the loot system gets way more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a little weird at first because you get legendaries kind of often, but they're also like that legendary is all five. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't ever change it. That one is five. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of weird. Yeah. Cause they're unique items uh, w with like no variances. It's very strange. Mm. But yeah, I, uh, I do like the loot system. Um, like I said, it could be slightly improved in some ways, but for the most part, it's, it's not bad. I've played ARPGs where I wasn't a fan and this is good. Um, it's just, seems weird sometimes when it comes to the higher end stuff but like you said the legendaries in this aren't really even legendaries yet so because they have so many tiers above that um combat is really good um i really enjoy it uh but that comes down to the you know the the passives the active abilities you're uh you know choosing uh and really honing in your build so and it reflects it really well in the combat you feel like you are making a character that's different than other people's characters um and if you really like, uh, you know, crafting a character and a build, this game definitely allows for that. Um, what else? We already went over the bugs. We did that early on, but uh, there's a lot. And it will go into my grade, sadly, because I do think I would be grading this pretty high um, without those. But I, I can't overlook them. And it's worth mentioning, it's early access. So these hopefully will disappear. By, um, by time 1.0. And yeah. I did purchase a game that I know is in early access. So that is on me for knowing i'm buying an early game but it does affect my enjoyment of the game yeah. um and they're pretty big pretty big issues the rubber banding constantly i think is probably my least favorite i would gladly get rid of that uh before not being able to use some of my skills sometimes because i would just change the zone real quick and fix that if i really had to but uh the rubber banding i can't fix um and it's really annoying especially when we couldn't walk down those stairs that, that was, was so weird that yeah. was really stupid and then uh I was just like, can you teleport to that? And you like teleport to a teleporter like t like 10 feet away from the stairs. Yeah. yeah. Just down the <laughs> stairs. You teleport over to and then I teleport to you. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. So at least there was a fix. But uh, yeah, that's a pretty bad, 
bad thing. And then I haven't done the different instances at once thing that you and Chris experienced, but I believe that it sounds like something the that would happen here. The of the multiplayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds uh, kind of crazy. Um, and then one last thing that we didn't really mention that I would like to see improved is loading into new zones, especially in multiplayer. Uh, single player is not so bad, but in multiplayer, it takes a little longer it than does. I'd like. A lot I, of times you're standing at the, the entrance to the next zone, just standing there waiting and it yeah. says entering and then you're just like hanging out and what i suspect is happening there because you can watch it happen in real time is the game will in real time adjust the difficulty depending on how many characters are in a zone yeah. and what i think is happening is it makes one person leave and then adjust the difficulty for both people and then the other person joins and it's it probably what's it happening again yeah. so which they got to streamline it but i actually yeah. like that they do do that because you can actually go do your own thing in this game yeah I can go like I could be like level like 15. You could be like level 30 mm. and you could obviously just go with me and kill things for me quickly. But um, if I want to go do the missions I'm on, I can go do those and it'll be adjusting the difficulty of the zones I'm in based off how many people are in that zone yeah. and vice versa. You and Chris could be in the same instance or not same instance, same game on a different instance yeah. and be doing what you need to do. And I kind of like if they can streamline that, I like that system because it, it almost it doesn't feel like an MMO, but it kind of falls an MMO principle yeah. of it's just the world. You can go and do whatever you need to do in it. Um, yeah, yeah. You're not restricted by who's hosting um, in terms of what you can get done. When I joined Sarah's game earlier, um, I was a couple levels ahead of her on these characters we were playing. And so um, I was going to help her catch up to where I was at, but I was like, oh, I got to turn this mission. So I, like I just teleported over to a place real quick and I was able to finish out that quest real fast while she was doing she was like selling stuff or something so um just having that ability to be able to do whatever you want i think is uh, a good system but it does affect the loading in and out of instances which I, I think you're probably right it is probably adjusting difficulty of the zones uh individually because it needs to be able to do that for people to play on their own yeah. so so hopefully they can uh speed that up and smooth that out yeah but, it, uh, it takes a little while but uh, it's just you know once you're aware of it you just kind of you know, accept that it's about to happen. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't change my enjoyment of the game, but it's something I definitely want them to oh, yeah. to improve. Um, yeah. It's definitely notable. Every time I stand there and watch somebody just teleport and I'm just still waiting. I'm like, oh, come on, let's go. Um, but yeah, overall, outside of the uh, early access issues, it's a really good RPG and super satisfying to play. Um, I will probably put this back on our game of the month list once it comes out fully in 1.0 because we are reviewing it in its early state like i said it's lacking some subclasses that are not in the game yet it doesn't it does it's it's not finished story-wise um has an end game but the, the the story's not finished yet so uh there's definitely more they'll be adding to the game as it approaches 1.0 but uh as of right now if you can handle the uh the bugginess of uh the newly implemented um multiplayer um it's definitely one of my favorite indie RPGs. So pretty, pretty cool. Anything else? Anything we didn't touch on? Uh, I mean, it has a global chat system. Um, yeah, if you're a social butterfly, uh, you will love that chat system because yeah. people literally treat it like a chat room. Um, and if you're me and you shut it off and another bug, <laughs> you... Uh, load back in if you have quit the game come back in and it'll say it'll be checked disable chat and chat's going and i'm like enable disable and just to get it to shut off again so um it doesn't stay off so it never bothers me because i'll also then read it sometimes and i've actually sat in there and talked to people as well so i'm not interested but, but uh, it is i like that it's there but if you're gonna have a disable button make sure it works sure yeah <laughs> so. i agree with that but yeah, that's the only thing I think we really missed. Um, I'm sure there's other things. There's a pretty, there's a lot of stuff. It's in an in-depth game. game. So, yeah. yeah. Should we jump into recommendations? Sure. Um, easy recommendation. If you like Diablo style ARPGs, um, I would definitely recommend it to you. I think you should definitely play it, uh, especially if you're looking at indie ARPGs. I think this one is definitely worth your time. Um, as long as you understand it's an early access and it has issues, 100% has issues happening that do not break the game, but they are annoying. Um, but, uh, if you are really into path of exile, building out your character and getting really detailed with it, this game is not quite on that level, but it's more complicated than a lot of other RPGs. Um, 
in a really easy to follow way. So um, definitely check it out. If you like loot based games, I think it has a good amount of loot in the game. Um, that goes with like, if you like crafting stuff in games and really like, you know, finding the perfect materials to build out the perfect thing for your build. If you like builds and games, um, I would recommend it uh, loosely. If you like MMOs, it kind of has a social component to it. So you won't feel alone when you play this game, even if you're playing single player, if that sounds appealing to you, if you like community and games, this game 100% has a community and they like to talk about this game. They like to tell people how to play this game. So if you have questions, people will answer it. And they like to talk about other ARPGs. Somebody in the chat today said that Diablo 4 has a better cosmetic store than this game and I was like their cosmetic team at Blizzard is probably bigger than the indie team that made this game so of course they have a better cosmetic I, store. I don't think that's questionable yeah <laughs> I, just, I read that I was like yeah probably what are you, what are you talking Let's about talk about Bobby Kodak money versus fucking some guys so you have an indie <laughs> developed game that just implemented multiplayer and you have the exact opposite of an indie game the most triple a you can get blizzard is 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 absolutely triple a so it was a weird comment i read but if you like stuff like that you like to read things you're like what the fuck is this guy talking about or oh that's a good point that's why i shut it off it's got it's <laughs> it's got a social component and i i like that stuff i uh, uh i've cut myself off of twitter uh, quite a bit in the in the last year or so but uh back when i was more active on there i uh whether i'm agreeing or disagreeing with people i like to be vocal about it so uh i am one of those people who was a more social person in, in online communities. Um, what would you add? End game. If you like games with end game, uh, something to grind for, um, something to put a lot of time into to get the perfect stuff you're looking for, uh, this has an end game. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to say RPGs in general because it is a yeah. very story heavy game with uh, RPG progression. So if you like role playing games, uh, action role playing games, uh, I think it, it kind of hits all the right check marks. And if you are into story oriented games, the game does have a, a, I think pretty interesting story. Is it the most amazing thing ever? No, but it is good. It's so, more ambitious than it, than I feel like it should be. Yeah. Um, like they, they work harder on it. I tend to skip story in a lot of these games because like, it's just a catalyst to move you forward a lot of times. And mm -hmm. I, I'm not there for that. Uh, this game, I did find myself like reading the dialogue the first time I played through. So, on that note, too, if you're somebody who likes the idea of time travel in stories, there's not all. I mean, of course, there's time travel stories out there, but there's not a lot of them out there, especially in video games. And so this does some creative stuff with that. So if that sounds appealing to you, it's worth checking out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anything else? I feel like multiplayer games. It's a multiplayer game. So you can play with your friends and uh, it's fun. Yeah. So I think it's everything. Yep. Uh, let's jump into grades. I have to grade it first, and this is difficult for me because in its current state and the fun factor, fun factor and build wise, I would like to give it an A minus, but I can't because there's too many issues. So then I want to push it to a B plus, but I still feel like that's a little strong for the amount of things they need to be fixing here. Um, so I think I'm going to give it a really, really strong B um that is likely to go up um if that makes sense to anybody listening um i, I want to grade it higher but there's just so many issues it's in early access uh but i'm not going C. I i mean this game is awesome i really enjoy it and i think if they can get everything smoothed out i could see myself possibly giving this an a minus because i do think it's one of the better arpgs out there right now and it's not even finished um, I really enjoy this game. I really like uh, building characters in it. And uh, yeah, if they can smooth out that multiplayer, that's brand new. And, uh, you know, fix some of those issues that just make the game annoying sometimes when you're having a lot of fun and you overlook it because you're having it's one of those games where you overlook the problems because the game's fucking solid. Uh, I hate when that happens, but it happens sometimes. And this is one of those games. So, yeah, really, really strong B. I want to give it a higher grade and sometime I probably will. Yeah. Um, I mean, for similar reasons, I, I can't go into the A territory because, um, you know, it's like close to broken in some regards. So, yeah. uh, uh, but I am very comfortable. I think giving it a B plus I do, uh, 
quite enjoy the game. And I think it offers the right amount of complexity, the right amount of gameplay, the right amount of length, and has things to do if you can't get enough after you beat the, the current story. Um, yeah, there's a lot of game to play. I think in 1.0, if they can get everything worked out, I would pretty easily give it an A. Um, I do think it is one of my favorite, if not, it's hard to say right now, uh, but favorite ARPGs. Uh, I think it just does the right things for me. So, um, Very cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, really, the only thing I'd like to see, and I can't imagine them not doing it, is just more classes, to be mm -hmm. honest. So, um, yeah. I No, it's fun. It's a blast. Um, multiplayer needs to be better, though. It, like that needs yeah. to happen. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So. All right, so B plus and a strong B. Um, anything else? No. Let us know in the comments. Have you played Last Epoch? If you have, what do you think of it? Do you like it? Do you not, not like it? What do you like about it? What's some of your favorite features? Uh, if you haven't played it, uh, why have you played it? And if this is the first time you're really hearing about it, does it sound interesting to you? Is this something you would want to play? You're looking forward to Diablo 4. So you can't even think about this. I would tell you to reconsider. It's good. And uh, yeah, let me know what you're thinking about in the comments below. When it comes to Last Epoch, what would you grade it? What do you think about the issues in the game? And uh, do you think they'll fix them? And yeah, uh, I think that's going to do it for this episode of Game of the Month. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and Joe's episode. Make sure to check out our other episodes. Check us out on our streams and uh, socials. Link down below. Yeah, you can talk to us anytime, all the time on Discord. Link down below. And we have a Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel more than liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, if you're brand new, I also forgot to say that we are on uh, audio platforms, uh, Spotify, iTunes, all of them. Link down below. And I have a TikTok if you'd like to watch my shorts that I release uh, pretty regularly every week and yeah i've been seth the, you've been chevy thank you for joining me chevy for this conversation I'm glad you enjoyed the game and thank you guys for joining us for this and until the next episode have a good one guys and take it easy mm -hmm.